Dev kit versus shipping product. Let's compare the two right now. Physically, what's different? And here we have it. Sega Mega CD development unit. Uh, it's finally hit the shores here and uh, dug it out, had a quick play of it. It seems to work, which is good news. Um, some interesting things I was noticing just as I was taking some photos available on retrojunkie.net. It's junkie with an IE, just in case my username or channel name didn't give that away. Um, compared with a stock standard retail Mega Drive, I only have a... This is actually my first Genesis. So that's, that's pretty good. My first Genesis being a development unit. <laughs> um, differences. Um, first thing I noticed is that the development unit is about... Oh, it's very slightly taller. You probably can't even notice it there, but it's got a bit more height to it, I reckon. Um, other interesting things are all these switches on the front. Let's just have a close-up there, just have a quick look at them. So at the moment all the dip switches are set to off, which allows it to boot. I'm not actually sure what the dip switches do. All I know is that uh, how it was configured, which I have taken down um, before flicking them all back to off, is uh, it didn't do anything in the configuration they were in. Probably because it needs to interface with the computer, which is what we'll be doing. Uh, this particular unit appears to have been used by the Code Monkeys. Uh, I do believe I have some of their other development gear, a Sega. You can make a CD, something or other. Um, also got some paperwork documents with this. Um, I'm going through documenting everything that's in them. I uh, also received four floppy disks, uh, some for 32X development and Sega CD and some other one. Uh, I couldn't read the label. Uh, they need to be dumped, which I will do in good time. Uh, but anyway, back to this. I'm still waiting on half the boards to arrive uh, to interface with a PC, so should be exciting. Um, the casing um, is immediately different. It's not a lock-on unit, like uh, there's no gap. It's just joined. There's apparently a board in there, a SCSI board, NASM type board, which allows interfacing with the PC, which is good. Because you'd want that in a, in a development unit. Um, the interesting thing is the casing, the actual Genesis part and the Mega CD part, they look to be just regular old run-of-the-mill Mega CDs and Genesises that have just been sort of carved up. Um, I noticed that because on the front where the volume hole normally is, there is no volume hole zoom in on the hole that isn't there. It's around the side. So that's interesting. There's also a heat sink here with a, a transistor of some sort. Um, voltage regulator, probably. I haven't actually read it yet, but it looks like a voltage regulator if I've ever seen one. Um, mm. Yes, so the volume, it's got the little sort of half circle there. And then also down here on the um, Mega CD part, it has this bit, which is a lock on this one that does absolutely nothing. What What is that meant to lock? I don't get it. But that's fine. But as you can see there, that one's got a volume jack on the front. Um, yeah, the obvious things there are all the giant switches and whiz bangs and there's a fan on the side it's got red bits makes it twice as fast I suppose um, as you can see on the regular Mega Drive Mega CD combo it does not have that we'll spin it around have a look at the back
Now I will eventually be pulling it apart and I'll probably record that on video because uh, apparently they're quite different to take apart to a... well, obviously because the internals are all completely different. Um, here we are on the back. So, a bit different to your run-of-the-mill Mega Drive. The Mega CD part's mostly the same down the bottom. The mixing, the audio out, voltage in. Um, so we go up, we have a look. The... Uh, doesn't have an extension port on this one, unfortunately. So it must be a newer mainboard. Uh, RF. Video jack, but then the uh, the power connector is in a different spot. So that's cool. SCSI is also not normally there. <laughs> Don't know if you've ever looked at the back of your Mega CDs if you have one. But uh, there is definitely no SCSI port on the back. And we also have emulator. Which for me runs into a card in the PC, or will do. Uh, same as the SCSI actually. And a 1992 cross products. Serial number 174 1293 there. Some sort of know, asset tag maybe for the developers who use this just to keep tabs on all their junk. I'd imagine if you were a developer you'd have a lot of things. Um, so that's the, the back of the unit. Pretty cool. Uh, it's running, the BIOS version is uh, 1.10. Uh, which isn't that exciting. Let's have a look at the underside. Right there. Straight off the bat, there's the serial number. Which... You know, it looks pretty stock standard to me. I mean, geez, how old was this thing? Interestingly, it doesn't have a hyphen after the model number. But if we swing over here, to my other one, there's a serial number for comparison. This one was uh, 6,000, whereas this one was 66,000. And uh, it's got a date there, 24th of the 3rd, 94. Uh, down the bottom there we have Code Monkeys. And so it was definitely a Seeger of America unit. Um, other things different on the front. Uh, all this fancy work there. I guess developers know what's happening. Hmm. So there's a button there, emulator, drive. I assume that does something with the PC side. But apart from that, I'm wondering if this faceplate was ever replaced, given that it is a Genesis. Hard to tell. The unit CD drive works, which is good news. I'll give you a show of it up and running one day. Uh, not just today. I'm going to bed. But uh, thanks for watching. Hope you learnt something about these little units. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. There'll be more to come, of course. Uh, as there always is. And uh, who knows? I might even try developing a game. Or at least getting a demo or something. Anything to happen. It's uh, well worth a shot. RetroJunkie.net for more. Dun 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 dun.